Welcome to Family Business World. I'm Dr. Dale Caldwell, and I have an amazing, uh, another amazing guest, uh, Chris Donnelly, who's uh, who's another another good friend. And Chris, welcome to the show. Um, Thanks, Dale, for having me. Yeah. Well, again, we've been talking about uh, about doing this, and you're doing some really interesting things. But first, tell me a little about the history of the business. What, what's going on with Donnelly? Well, Donnelly Construction, as you, you're well aware, it's a family commercial construction company that my father started 42 years ago. Wow. Uh, we've been at it a long time. Um, that's our primary business. Uh, we also have a uh, real estate division in, mm -hmm. and we also have an um, energy division, Donnelly Energy, which we started in 2008. Okay. Uh, in the, you know, the last recession. Um, but, you know, our construction division were uh, heavily involved in the, the private sector from country club renovations, the banks, private schools, churches, um, you name it. In 40 years, we've done a lot. You know, we used to do a lot of retail back in the day right. um, throughout the 80s and 90s. We, had, You know, before my time, my dad would, would travel all around really the country and do fit outs for retail centers. Amazing. Um, and so that kind of morphed and over the last 20 years we focused heavily in the country club world mm -hmm. and usually every year we, we, we renovate at least three four country clubs and that I, uh, the one nice thing about that is that keeps us busy throughout the winter so we're pretty much busy all year round you know as a club they close in the winter so when do they want to do all the renovations mm -hmm. come you know Labor Day they shut down or close to it and we go like mad to uh, Memorial Day so that they can open back up. And now you just do the buildings? Do you actually do, you don't do the courses, you really just do the buildings? Just the buildings, okay. no. We okay. don't really do any course maintenance or construction uh, of that sort, just buildings. Now, now, do you have any brothers or sisters in the business? Um, did your dad have any brothers and sisters? Or yeah, tell me about the family dynamics. So my dad is one of four brothers. I'm one of three brothers. Mm -hmm. Um, my, my dad's brothers, I guess, helped him when he first started the business. Uh -huh. Um, and he pretty much took it and ran with it. Uh, they went off to do their own thing. They actually moved, all my dad's brothers moved throughout the country. Uh, -huh. uh my dad's brother, one moved to California, another one's in Georgia, another one's in, uh, well, South Jersey. But, um, me, my, me and my brothers, or my other two brothers, I'm the middle child, mm -hmm. and my older brother uh, has been with the company since college. He actually uh, went off on his own for a while after college to kind of see the world in a different place and see what other companies have to offer and came back and has been very helpful with, you know, what he's learned. Um, so he's been back with us for a few years now. Mm -hmm. uh, my younger brother, Sean, has been uh, working with the, the company mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. since he graduated college. Uh, so he, I'm 38. My brother's about to be 40. Mm -hmm. And my younger brother's 33. So yeah. okay. we're all kind of in the midst of it. We all have a different uh, aspect of what we focus on. My younger brother's actually involved with the manufacturing company that we represent mm. from uh japan actually we, we sell machines throughout north america wow. so that's a completely different business that we got involved with about 20 years ago interesting the uh, what a complex what a complex com so let, i want to hear about your background some but first let, your dad what, what got him into construction why did they start what was he doing before he got into construction well he started it's interesting he started in college painting houses oh, okay. houses and he was trying to figure out a way to make money and make ends meet and uh, my grandparents didn't really have much and he started painting homes and anytime he was in a house if if the homeowner asked him to fix something he would say yes no matter what he didn't, <laughs> no matter what it was yeah no matter what it was he figured it out and uh started that way and working and painting and then doing little handyman stuff and then we we morphed into a subcontractor doing all types of carpentry mm. um and with that morphed even more to become a gc and um so we've been really a full gc for over 30 years wow. about wow. um, 
my dad said I got started painting, I think, in 1977, I think. Um, so it's pretty interesting how we started. Uh, we, now we have about 100 employees. We service the whole tri-state area. Wonderful. Um, you know, and it's a, you know, he had a pretty good recipe for success. Yeah. Yeah. And now uh, the interesting part is how is the next generation going to take over? Exactly. And that's why I joined Fairleigh Dickinson's, the family business forum, mm -hmm. you know, all for families and try to learn the six, you know, whatever the people are dealing with, how the transition's going, because eventually my dad right now is 65. Okay. So he's still on the younger side, but, mm -hmm. you know, he's worked like a maniac for a long time and, he, you know, he's had enough. Right, right. <laughs> so... Yeah. He's not going to hang up his tool belt tomorrow, but eventually he's going to uh, spend more, more and more time, you know, taking some time off and starting to enjoy a little bit, play, play some golf too. Well, and again, I mean, you have so many different businesses that there, you know, there are enough things to keep uh, the next generation, uh, you know, working. And so, again, you've been a member of our Family Business Alliance and come to our Family Business Forums. But you're also uh, in the Fairleigh Dickinson Silverman College of Business MBA program. Talk to me. Why did you decide to do that, and, and how's that going? Well, it was interesting. About four years ago, um, I was sitting down with my dad talking about you know the next generation taking over and mm -hmm. trying to uh, look at the business from a different angle and. No one in our family has ever gotten an MBA, and he said, I think maybe you should go back and uh, potentially look into getting an MBA. I think it would be really helpful, because mm -hmm. my dad just went to college and then worked through college, and right after college, boom, off he went, working, you know, six days a week, you know, 60, 70 hours a week. Right. So with that, you know, at that time, it was four years ago, I started looking into MBA programs, found Fairleigh Dickinson's executive MBA program. Loved everything about it. It was actually the Saturday program. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was in person, you know, with classmates in front of a professor. And that's what I wanted to do. I didn't want to take any online classes. Right. So I signed up, not really knowing what I was getting myself into. Um, I started in the spring of 2017 and thought to myself, you know, I'm going to take my time and get this MBA. At that point, my kids were only three years old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... I knew that I couldn't be in school 10 months a year and, right. you know, have the, the family and the work aspect. So I ran through that spring semester, took the fall off, and I've been going at, ever, at it ever since. I just finished up my last spring semester here in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, due to the whole COVID-19, yeah. uh, I had to... They, FDU went to online remote learning, right. and my last class I had to withdraw from oh boy. because I just couldn't do this whole, everything online with everything going on and, yeah. you know, just too crazy. So um, I only have one class left, and then I will graduate, but um, it's been a whirlwind. I've learned a tremendous amount, had all great professors, met a lot of great people, and um Yes, so I'm almost there. I'm almost to the finish line. Almost, yeah. Well, you've been, you've been doing no. Again, it's a, it is a great it is a great program. And so I, I want to talk about the webinar. Um, as you know, we've had Tony Russo on um, on Family Business World from CIA and J, and you're doing a webinar with them. But before, with the with the pandemic and the crisis, is construction, you know, is, are you hurting? Is it is it has it maintained? What's going on with with your construction during the the crisis? Um. Well. We had a bunch of jobs in New York that were shut down. Mm -hmm. You know, they, none of them were essential, so we had to close them down. We had a hotel we were renovating in Manhattan. Uh, we had a couple office fit outs we were doing in, uh, in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And so they had to shut down. We also had to shut down a few projects in New Jersey that were not essential. Um, we also have about, we had about, out of our 100 employees, we had about 30 of them. 30 employees that wanted to take a few weeks off to regroup. Okay. You know, I guess they were scared given the, the circumstances. So um, they're still taking some time off, you know, hoping that this all, you know, I don't I, I don't hold a crystal ball and when this is all going to end, but I'm hoping by June things kind of yeah. get back to normal and we can get back working. But I do know um, we've had projects that were already on the books 
signed with a contract that we're supposed to start this upcoming either summer or fall mm. that have been postponed oh, indefinitely. Boy. Oh boy. So, um, it, you know, it is a, a tough time. You know, we're trying to do our best. Mm -hmm. uh, the one company that is pushing and is still building is Amazon. Mm -hmm. They actually just hired us to do a fit out. They just, I guess, signed leases for three buildings, two in Massachusetts and one in Newark. Wow. And wow. We're doing the fit out for those three. Um, so that's going to keep us busy. You know, that's good news. That's great news. The yeah. are, are those competitive bid? Is that relationship? How does for those that don't know construction? I mean, how I know for the state government you have to you have to do competitive bid, but what about private companies? How does that work? Private. Um, some people want to just work with you, and you mm -hmm. can say, "Hey, look, here's our price." Right. Uh, other times it's a bid, and if we have a relationship, we can say to either the client or the architect or both, say, "Hey, look, you know." We're, we, we, you know, we want to help out, you know, any way we are, if, if, uh, our numbers don't look the way they should, you know, just give us a, an idea and where we are, where we stand. And if we can make the numbers work and, uh, it's something that would, would help us both out, we'll give it a go. I mean, most of our work is either re repeat business or referrals. Right. So there's always a relationship. Um, the Amazon fellow uh, in, in, that works for them, uh, the president of our construction division has known him for about a year. Mm, okay. um, mm -hmm. And we're finally working with them now. So um, we just finished up one of them in Massachusetts, they, and then they just hired us for another one in Mass, and then the one here in Newark. So uh, that's fantastic. That's uh, well. That's you know. Right, right now, that's there's probably no better client <laughs> than Amazon. Given what's yeah. going on, and people are ordering online, and their expansion, and and um, and so on, um, and, and so that's one of the things too that we're, we're hearing. As I do this show, you know, this family business world show, is that relationships, Chris, are so important that you have to for your business, no matter what business you're in, developing a relationship. And even now, as you're looking for stimulus information and other things, dealing with your bank, dealing with your accountant, your attorney, those relationships. And you've always been a great relationship guy. I know you, you play golf and other things. And what's your secret about developing networking? What, what kind of advice would you give to family business folks who want to learn how to network? Um, I'm a big advocate of uh, golf. Mm -hmm. And you can learn an awful lot on somebody's character hanging out with them for four hours on a golf course, mm -hmm. whether it's good or bad. To, to, so, to see if they uh, move the ball, to see if they uh, you yeah, know, take some, uh, you know. You know, you can you can you can take out a potential client, and the way they act on a golf course really truly shows how they act out off the course. Yeah. And we've had times where we've played golf with people that we thought were a potential client, and you know they're throwing their clubs, like you said, cheating, and it's just then you say, hey, I, you know, I do not want to. Right. Right. I don't want to work with this guy, and uh, it was funny actually. He said that I was golfing with somebody actually this past fall. In just a nice Monday outing for a fundraiser, and the fellow was cheating, and it was just very awkward. Oh, wow. and, and just, I said to my dad after the round, I said, "Well, I don't think I want to get that guy's business card." Yeah, yeah. And um, we, that's, you know, we we just we were randomly with them, but anyway. Yeah. That's uh, a. Yeah. Uh, no, no. It's a, and again, you hear those stories. I, I mean, I I always heard about that. You know, if somebody takes you out for breakfast. And they're interviewing you, and you put salt on the eggs before you taste it. Some people say, you know, that's, uh, you know, they, they, uh, you know, they, they, their judgment is questionable. So, so those of you that are listening, whenever you're interact, you're on an interview. Whenever you're interacting with somebody, you better be on your best behavior. Hopefully, it's natural that you're not going to cheat, but that's part of, you know, that, that's that's part of the part of the game. And so, so we'll begin talking. We're gonna we're gonna in a, in a little while. We're gonna take a, a break, but I want to begin talking about this webinar and kind of this new. This new, um, you know, we've talked about doing some training and other things. Tell me a little bit about what you're thinking there. We'll start there and then, then uh, and maybe finish up after after a break. Okay. So about when the market crashed in '08, uh, we were looking at other ways to help our clients. You know, besides just offering them construction mm -hmm. and you know offer services in in and around facilities. And 
we came, uh, we developed and started this energy division, Donnelly Energy, and we've been working with the New Jersey Clean Energy Program, mm -hmm. which uh, are, there's a bunch of programs for different commercial buildings, residential, in terms of um, upgrading uh, facilities with energy efficiency measures. measures. And the state of New Jersey was putting a lot of money into it and funding a lot of it. So we ran with that for the about last 10 years. We, we were the one main program we were working on was it was called the direct install program. Okay. okay. And the program paid up to 70% of the total cost to upgrade commercial buildings. Really? Really? So, really? That, yeah. That's the, uh, um, we're, we're going to break for a commercial break, but I want to stay on that 70% because that, that's pretty incredible. And most people don't know about this. So. Uh, hold on, we'll come right uh, right back after this commercial break and talk more about uh, this this energy energy program. To family business world we're coming back after the uh, commercial break talking to Chris Donnelly of Donnelly Industries and uh, talking about the energy program so you know the 70 percent number fascinates me tell me more about about that Chris so the New Jersey clean energy program which is uh, if you got anyone wants to check out the website it's njcleanenergy.com mm -hmm. and the one program we were working on was the direct install program mm -hmm which was under the uh, commercial, uh, and if you click on the commercial tab, mm -hmm. there's there's a, about four or five programs. The direct install program was the one we were, we were working on. It was for small to medium sized commercial buildings. And in essence, you would go through, one of our auditors would go through, audit the building, see how many lights you have, in, 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 interior, exterior, mm -hmm. go on the roof, do a count of the rooftop units, and punch in the numbers and say uh, it was $100,000 to replace all the lights to LED mm -hmm. and to replace the rooftop units to high efficiency mm -hmm. units. The program would would pick up 70% of that. They wow. would pay 70%. The client would pay 30%. Uh, the nice thing about it was and is the program pays us directly the 70% okay. and the client pays us the 30% directly. Wow, that's nice. So you don't have to wait to get your money back. You know, you don't, you don't have to fund it all. Right. Um, so it's up to some, depending on the, the measures, mm -hmm. you know, if you had a newer unit, you're not going to get a 70%, but the older the equipment was, the better you're going to reach that 70% uh, incentive. Mm. That's what they were trying to do. The state uh, incentivized the oldest equipment throughout New Jersey. Right, right. So we were, we were going with that for the last 10 years. Um, when all this COVID hit, mm. they put it all on pause. Um, we're, we're not even allowed to audit buildings for mm. potential customers. Right. We can't do anything with the program. So over the last month, we've been thinking about other ways for the energy guys to offer other products to our clients, our construction or indoor energy, to friends, to tenants. Mm. You know, what can we do to help people out to get, once they go back to work, Right. What else can we offer them to help help them out? Mm -hmm. And with that, we've been looking into UV lighting mm -hmm. and how it, it can be used to disinfect and sterilize really? um, buildings. Yep. And it's there's different UV mm -hmm. lighting, whether it's UVA, B, or C. Okay. Uh, UVA and B is safe to be around while it's on. So a lot of hospitals already have these products. Okay. Installed. Uh, UVC is different where you can't be in a room when this when these products are on. So say you have a big 
a ballroom or a big office, you could potentially wheel one of these products into the room, you know, either at night or in the morning before people come into work. Uh, somebody would leave the room, turn it on with a remote or an app, and it would disinfect depending on the size and how much stuff is in the room. It would disinfect the room. Really? The, the, whole, the whole room, surfaces and everything? And everything. The, the, Walls, uh, floors, desks, under desks. You know, obviously, if you have a book on a desk, right. it's not going to get inside the pages of the book, right? Right. right. But in essence, any surface, uh, it'll disinfect. And um, it's pretty interesting stuff. And so the, the supplier who we were using with the New Jersey Clean Energy Program for the last 10 years, mm -hmm. they're the largest wholesaler of lighting in the country. Wow. We've partnered with them to offer this UV lighting. And so over the last few weeks, we've been offering webinars to our customers or different customers, uh, clients, like I said, tenants, anybody uh, we can think of, we're, we're offering free webinars to kind of train them and really just educate people on all the different products out there. Because once people go back to work, they're going to need to feel safe right. no matter where you're parking, right? Right. And so, um, like today, like we were discussing before, like today we, we partnered with the CIA and J, Commerce and Industry, right, right. and we are having a webinar with them at 1 p.m. Um, to talk about all these different products and really educate everyone on them. Well, that, well that's right. So let me, you know, again, I, I know there are those in the audience that say, light? How can light... You know, how can light clean surfaces? Don't you need, you know, the equivalent of a Lysol or something to spray and so on? Can you talk a little about, so the light, how does it kill, and it kills COVID-19, it kills COVID-19. How does that, how does that work, you know, for the uneducated like me? Well, you know, I'm no lighting expert, but um, it depends. So uh, UV, UVA, B, and C, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, UVA and B have been, and C, uh, been around a long time. They've actually been around since the 30s. Mm, wow. And in theory, it, there hasn't been that much of a demand for a product like that because, you know, the old school way was you have a company come in at night, they clean your office, they right. buy disinfectants. Right. And they disinfect an office, clean, 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 you know, the bathrooms, clean the, the doorknobs. But now you're thinking, hey, how can we, how can we have some, have a product that's literally going to, Anything it touches, it's going to clean. Yeah. So these different beam of lights can disinfect depending on what type they are. So obviously UVA and B uh, are not as strong as a UVC, which is why UVC you can't be around the product. Right. right. Um, it's pretty interesting stuff, and we've had a lot of people that have been really um, excited about this. You know, we've, given, we've been having these webinars, like I said, for a couple of weeks now. Um, like I said, I'm not the lighting expert, so I can't get into all the exact details of each each right. UV ray. Right. Um, but it's been been around for a long time. Like I said, hospitals. But, but have it's fascinating. These but, but Chris, yeah, but it's fact because again, I I went to I, I got my car cleaned yesterday, and I I went to my local, and uh, and they told me stay in the car. We don't clean insides of cars. You know, we can't be open if we don't, you know, we can only do the outside. We can't touch your car. And so these are the New Jersey regulations. And I'm sitting as you're talking, I'm thinking, is this something that, that, that people could use to clean the inside of their car? You know, these UV rays. Is this something where you could have, is it a flashlight kind of thing or something? Do you know? Is that, does, is that available? Are they working uh, on that? Some of the, the, for the... Um more of them, they're all, they're more larger products, right, maybe okay. the size of a two by two box, two foot oh, by two okay. foot box okay. um, that would be on wheels that you literally could wheel into from room to room. Right. I right. haven't seen any hand handheld okay. um, products. Okay. There are supposedly handheld products on the internet, but um, given that they're, uh, we haven't really seen them be that successful. Mm -hmm. um, but the the bigger products are meant for for larger buildings. But like yesterday, we had a webinar for country clubs, right? And one of the club managers asked, you know, how can we disinfect all the golf carts? Mm. Mm. So you can set up one of these in the cart barn, right? Turn it on, and you know, depending on on the the room and how large it is and how many golf carts you have, uh -huh. you may have to set up a few, or you may have to 
you know, do a, a 20 at a time, mm-hmm. but you can disinfect stuff like that. And I'm not sure you could, you could set up a car outside and disinfect it, but you know, if you had a garage and you had a car, right. you could yeah. surely set up a product like this in your garage and disinfect your car short. Well, well let's, let's talk, because again, obviously, you know, we're, we're at the Rothman Institute of Innovation and Entrepreneurship at Fairleigh Dickinson University, where I'm the, the director. You know, we're working with small businesses. We're becoming one of the voices of small businesses. And what you're talking about is so important, because so many of the restaurants, so many of the retail folks are closed, the second they get the orders to open up, people are going to be scared to go in, to eat. But if you have this kind of lighting that, you know, every night before they, you know, they, they clean up, you know, the, this light goes and, and cleans it up, that makes people more comfortable and that'll help these family businesses get back on their, on their feet. And that's really kind of what you're, you're thinking, right? Is to really be, oh, yeah. you know, and, you know and with, with the cleaning and then you promote it to your clients. Yeah. Whether it's a billboard you have, saying, you know, promoting, hey, look, this is how we clean our, our facility. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't see people going anywhere without feeling comfortable, and rightfully so. And so, uh, is the state of really- New Jersey? Is the state of New Jersey really? Have they? I don't want to say, you know, I don't want to mandating things, but are they giving advice or they're, you know, have they come out with things like this to say, okay, if you're going to open up your restaurant, you know, do you got to use this kind of thing? Um, are, are you hearing anything? Is the state giving any guidance or they're just so overwhelmed, um, you know, to say, well, this is how you have to clean your restaurant before you open up. Have you heard anything about that? Through the state, I haven't, I haven't seen anything. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as you know, Murphy's definitely taking his time and slowly opening things up. You know, this past weekend they opened up the golf courses and the parks, and I think over time they're gonna they're gonna learn more about potentially products like this. Um, but you know, I don't know if they're gonna force everyone to clean that way because you know you can go the the other way and right. and the put on clean. a pair of gloves and yeah. manually clean stuff. So, um, but I think disinfecting in general is going to be the way of the future for yeah. everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're hearing more and more about, you know, this summer will will, you know, hopefully, you know, get closer to normal and then there may be a you know, maybe something coming up in the, you know, in the winter again next year. So, so this cleaning isn't going to go away, masks aren't going to go away, gloves aren't going to go away. Um, so so I think we're we're really almost at the at the end of time. I mean, you have an amazing family business that's that's surviving the crisis, that's doing well. You have your brothers with you. You know, what what advice do you have for for family businesses as as you know as you've worked? Um, do you have one of the things that I teach my students? We have you know we say a lot of businesses would have a family council or a board of directors or advisors or or other things. Do you do you guys have that structure or what? What are some of the best practices that you think? Uh, as we end, that a family business should should know about? Uh, I think a board of directors is important. Uh, we have one. Mm-hmm. I think also, this actually came to us about six months ago. Somebody mentioned to us that we should have um, a board of directors and let each family member pick somebody to mm-hmm. be on the board. Mm-hmm. Be- which is it's actually that's quite interesting because our board of directors was a group my father put together right right and now here we are we have a you know the next generation three brothers and so we've been in the we've been talking about that that the next board of uh meeting we have that myself my two brothers bring somebody on that we feel would be important for the success of the business which i think is which is a I think that's great. I think that's great. And, and I, I got to give your, you know, I don't know your dad well, but, but, you know, this whole idea of thinking about succession. Too many folks, it's been their life work. They're scared. They basically say, when I leave, you know, I, I, uh, you know my life is over. But it's not. It's really just your new life is starting and you have, your, you've, you've, you have amazing family members to take over. So, so Chris, yeah. I, I just want to, uh, um, you know, thank you for, uh, for coming on the show. It's, it's been a pleasure. I'm looking forward to hearing more about this, this, this lighting, this way to clean with lighting. I think that, that could really help a lot of family and small businesses. Um, so, so thank you. Keep golfing. I'm a tennis guy. Uh, we've been pushing to open up the tennis courts. But, uh, you know, if you open up golf, you've got to open up tennis. Uh, but I yep. love golf, too. So, uh, so thank you very much.
Thanks, Dale, for having me. Yeah, take care. Take care. Good luck with the webinar today. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye. This is Dale Caldwell signing off. Thank you for joining us on Family Business World, and we will see you next week.